So you can tell at this point we still have this uh, one tooth that has not been prepared. So we have a reference in length. It's just a safety precaution uh, for those of you that want to try the technique. It can be very effective. So you can double check length and facial reduction. In addition to that, you can use, um, uh, open please. You can use silicone indexes made from the initial situation, meaning that it was made with composite bonded on the incisal head. And you can see now that we have reduction or space for the ceramic. Uh, again, our primary goal was to take the composite off and that was really dictating where the finish line finished, but we would like two to maybe two and a half millimeters of reduction off the incisal edge. In addition to an index such as this, you can use a facial index. And the facial index is positioned, and you can see that there are, are several cuts in the, in the index. So if we hold the facial index in place, retract the first of the cuts, which is, puts us in the incisal one-third, and now using a mirror. You can see, again, trying to hold the index completely in position, sometimes as a trick, especially on taping, uh, if I want to seat it completely on the uh, facial aspect. But you can see that we have a controlled reduction tooth to tooth. And then if we retract the second part of the index, Once again, you can see there's a controlled reduction tooth to tooth, and it's approximately um, 7 tenths of a millimeter, 0.7 millimeters in size, mid facially 0.5, and 0.3 millimeters as we go to the gingival aspect. So it's again a way to check to see that you have adequate reduction as you uh, complete the facial aspect as well as interproximally. Discussing the interproximal reduction, I had stated we're breaking the enamel contact and because I've left the, the right center unprepared, I sometimes do reduce that a little bit to make sure I don't over reduce the actual prepared tooth. But you can see there is uh, maybe one or two tenths of a millimeter space between the enamel interproximally between central and lateral and the same between lateral and canine. So that allows me to wrap the porcelain around interproximally, develop the best translucency in the final veneer, and avoid any staining or discoloration um, as the years go on if there is any type of staining of the composite finish line. Uh, from enamel to porcelain. So again, it takes in approximately so it will not be seen. One option at this point is for us to take an impression with the unprepared tooth. And again, it would be an excellent way to control the length of the definitive restoration and facial position. And uh, if you haven't uh, prepared the interproximal of the unprepared tooth, it can also be used to confirm midline location. So that is one option for us is to take an impression at this point. But of course, we would need to take a second impression after this uh, tooth has been prepared. OK, now I'm going to begin prepping the upper right central incisor uh, with the same sequence used before with the incisal depth cut.